Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Off Workshop. Many of you know that I really enjoy doing the 3D printing, but one of the problems that I have is that the filament gathers moisture. And how do you get rid of that moisture? Because with moisture on the filament, it causes many different problems. Needless to say, the filament itself can break, you can get bubbles in your print, and you So the real question boils down to, do you need a dryer such as this? Now this one is by Fix Dry. And before I actually show you the dryer, I want to talk about relative humidity for a moment. Relative humidity, often expressed as a percentage, is the amount of water vapor that's in the air. And that's relative to the air temperature itself. So for an example, right now in my area, it's 92 degrees. The relative humidity is 67%. What does that actually mean? That means if you had a cup with water in it, and that cup would be 67% full of water. Meaning that if you reached 100%, that cup would be full, and that the air, based on the temperature of the 92 degrees, would be totally saturated. And also, there's another term that I want to just throw out to you, is dew point. Dew point actually means that when that temperature reaches dew point, the air would be totally saturated. So in this case, we have 92 degrees outside with a relative humidity of 67%, which is an awful lot of moisture, but the dew point is actually 79 degrees. So what does that mean? If for some reason right now, the temperature was able to be reduced to 79 degrees, we'd have 100% humidity, the air would be totally saturated, and we more than likely would have fog. But needless to say, there would be probably small water droplets forming on different objects. Well, that can be easily transferred over into what happens with our filament. When you have high relative humidity, different items, including your filament, absorb that moisture. And then when you try to print with a filament that has a high moisture content, it's very common to be able to have a very poor quality print you can get bubbles in it, you can get lines, you can have all types of different problems. I've actually had steam being generated as the object is trying to print. To give you another example, right now in Phoenix, it's 111 degrees, but the relative humidity is 16%. There's not a lot of moisture in the air compared to here with our temperature and humidity. World of difference. That air is very dry, and you could probably set your filament on the shelf and not have to worry about how it's being stored because it's not going to be gathering up a lot of moisture. While in this part of the country, with 67% humidity, it's going to be soaking up a lot of moisture into that filament. So you have to be able to judge what part of the country that you're in, what type of relative humidity that you get, and that is the determining factor on whether or not you need to be able to have a dryer such as the fixed dry to be able to keep your filament dry and ready to use. So do you need to have a dryer? Well, if you live in a high humid area, I would say absolutely, yes you do. Here's a real good example. This roll of filament now has been sitting on the printer for several days and it has gathered quite a bit of moisture. You can see how it has broken in multiple locations along this line. Do you think you'd be successful at being able to print with this filament? I have to tell you, no, you're not. It's going to continue to break and fall apart. You can see this is almost snapped completely through. If I move this just a little bit, it's going to break completely in two. So this is one example that you can see very easily what will happen when your filament gathers a lot of moisture. I'm actually going to take that roll of filament and put it into this dryer and we're going to dry it and then test an item. Now this comes with just two simple items. This Teflon tube that you can actually use and thread through this machine and run the filament directly to your 3D printer. It also has this little surround that will go inside of this uh, dryer. The control panel, very very simple. This dryer by Fix Dry has everything that you need but nothing that you don't need. Very simple and concise. The air vents on top, you have six vents here. You also have 
additional vent. There's six on the top, and there's two on the front and two on the back. Now, these actually have a little rubber grommet through it, and this is where you can actually run your filament through this also and run it directly to your printer. When you remove the cover and look inside, you can see the heating element right there. The air is actually pulled in from all sides underneath it, and it comes up through the little fan, goes through the heating element, and into the cabinet itself to be able to dry the filament. These rollers are free rolling. And the idea behind that is if you want to actually print while your uh, filament is in here, technically you can do that. Now this particular model is to be able to handle two different spools of the filament. These rollers are actually free turning, so they will just turn freely, and then you can set the filament right here onto those rollers. Now, if you're strictly drying your filament and you're not using the filament, this is where you need to use the shroud. This shroud right here, just snaps into these four holes. They just drop into position, just like that. What does that allow? It allows when that heat is coming up through it, it actually disperses that heat along the sides of your spool of your filament. Why is that important? Because if you don't, all that heat will be coming into one section of your filament and that can distort your filament. So if you're just simply drying your filament, always have this shroud in place. And quite frankly, from the experiments that I've done, I like having this shroud in place at all times. This Teflon tube that comes with it, you can leave it this long. You can cut it and make it shorter if you wish, but it's designed to build a slide directly into these rubber grommets so that you can actually run your filament through this uh, tube over to your machine itself. If you don't want to use this, you don't need to. You can also just use the filament itself and be able to run it through any of these different holes. Now this particular roll was in really bad shape and now you can see after drying it, it's much more flexible. It's not breaking. I was able to just feed it back through here and not have to worry about it breaking. So that's the advantage of being able to dry the filament. In the manual itself, it gives you this chart. And this is actually probably the most important chart that you're gonna see when dealing with a dryer. It shows exactly the different types of filament. In my case, I'm using a PLA and it says to set the temperature for 50 degrees centigrade, and you can run it plus or minus four hours to be able to dry the filament. And then you also can see here a list of other different types of filament and the recommended temperatures and the time to be able to dry the material. So this is one manual that you definitely need to be able to uh, keep near the machine so that you're changing from one type of filament to the other, you'll be able to set it to the proper temperature and correct time. The controls are very easy. We have this right here. We can just push and turn it on. And then you can see the temperature, the relative humidity, and the actual time. If you want to change this, for example, with a PLA, I would change this, and then I can use these buttons right here to be able to increase or decrease the temperature. With the PLA, I'd want that at 50 degrees. You can see that there's 74% humidity right now in this container, which means since I just put this lid on, we have 74% humidity in this room. And then here, by just pushing this button again, you can change to the time. And for an example, if I wanted to change this to four hours, I could put that to there and then change this down. And then that would give me the four hours. And just touch this again 
and then you would be ready to be able to put the filament in here and start the drying operation. So the controls are extremely easy to be able to operate. One of the things that I want to point out is I've recently just finished drying this filament and it went from a filament that was all break, uh, breaking every time that you moved it to something that's easy to work with and it could easily go into this section and not break. I could not do that before and that's just strictly because of the moisture. Now that this is actually out in the air again, how long is it going to take to gather up that moisture into this filament? Well, not long. So proper storage is very important. And in a previous video, I've actually shown you exactly how I store the filament to be able to keep it and preserve it ready to be able to handle that next print. Before we start the drying process with this uh, filament, I want to show you this is the relative humidity right now in my home. It's at 70 percent. Now that's a very high percentage. Now keep this in mind. If I had a cup of water, that cup would be 70 percent full of water relative to the temperature. And the actual temperature in the house right now was 74 degrees. Remember this roll of filament that was all cracked and broken? This is what it looks like when you have a whole lot of humidity that's been absorbed into this filament. I'm going to take this roll and put it into the fixed dry dryer and we're going to dry this filament now for the next four hours. And I want to show you the difference. The first step, measure the filament. This is 403 grams. Now granted, this is a cardboard spool also, but still 403 grams is what we're starting with. This spool is 1.096 kilograms. So that's what we're going to start with. We're putting both of these into the dryer. We're turning it on. And the first thing you're going to notice is look at the humidity. It's showing that it's at 63%. To set this up properly, I'm going to use the manual. Now this is the PLA filament that I'm drying. So we need to set the temperature at 50 degrees centigrade for roughly four hours. To make the adjustment, we'll push this button and we have the flashing on the temperature. So I'll raise the temperature now to the 50 degrees Celsius. I'll click the button again so we can adjust the time and I'm going to set that for the four hours. So that is going to be set. So now it's ready. I'll just hit this selection button one more time and the process has started. This unit is going to be heating up now. So after one hour, the humidity has already dropped down to 29%. After each hour, I took the filament out and weighed it one more time to see the amount of moisture that was escaping. I'll show you those results at the end. Now, is this the best way to do it? No, this is just for the experimental uh, purposes only because the ideal situation would be able to leave the filament in this fix dry for the entire four hours. So this is almost like starting over each time, but still you can see the results as the drying process continues. Okay, we're down to the last minute on our four hour drying schedule. The first thing you notice is that the humidity is down to 24%. That's actually amazing. I'm also going to weigh the filament. The white PLA had some interesting results. The original weight was 403, and after the four hours, it was down to the 399. If we graph this out, you can see the starting weight, and you can see how each hour it reduced. And then that last hour, it had flatlined. So that means the moisture that was in there was, for the all intensive purposes, gone. Now, if we continue this out longer, would this drop still further? Probably an insignificant amount. So you can see just how effective the fixed dry dryer actually is to be able to take the moisture out of this filament. For the black PLA, I didn't graft it, but the starting weight was 1.096 kilograms, and you can see how it also dropped significantly over that four hour period of time. So I'm very impressed with how the fixed dry 
filament dryer unit actually dries out the filament and makes it where it's ready to be able to use again to do the prints. I'm going to set this up again where the filament is inside of the dryer. And I just ran the filament through one of those little rubber grommets and then over to the machine. And you can see how this filament is reacting. It's much, much different. It's not brittle anymore. It is flexible. I can move it and not worry about it breaking. This is the first time I've tried to actually print an object using the filament inside of this dryer. So this is the setup. The project that I'm going to print says it's going to take 2 hours 30 minutes. So I'm going to set the dryer up to the same exact time frame. This way, when the print is done, the dryer will also turn off. What I noticed as this begins to print is that the filament is not rolling as easy as I was hoping for. And I actually had to assist it by actually pulling the filament out of the dryer itself. I'm not sure if it's because of the location and how I have it set up. Further experimentation is going to be required for this. But I must say, this setup did not work. I actually moved the dryer to this location to see if this would work any better. Quite frankly, it did not. So this is going to take an additional work to see if I can make it actually use the filament inside of the dryer to be able to print an object. The print quality, however, is outstanding. Having the dry filament makes a world of difference. I end up pausing the print and moving the filament out of the dryer back onto the original stand on the printer itself to be able to continue the print. The print's now finished and I want to show you a comparison between this one and a previous one that I had printed. There's a world of difference between the one on the left and this one with much cleaner, smoother lines. Having the dry filament using the fixed dry uh, filament dryer did make a huge difference. So I'm very impressed with the change from the one on the left to the one on the right with dry filament. By the way, I want to give a shout out to the Keep On Growing YouTube channel for providing this on the Thingiverse to be able to have it as a free download. This little Coke bottle uh, self-watering device is working absolutely fantastic in the garden and it's free download. So I'm very happy that uh, if this has been posted onto the Thingiverse. So a shout out to Keep On Growing. Check out their YouTube channel. On this shroud, you can see rub marks right here where the filament was trying to turn and scraping right onto this shroud. Now, is it because this is a cardboard type of spool? I don't know, but this is something that I'm gonna to have to further test. And this may be the cause for the reason that it did not feed properly into the 3D printer. Well, at this point, I have given you a real good review of both the pro and the cons for this fixed dry filament dryer. Quite frankly, is it worth it? I would say absolutely yes. I'm definitely going to give this a thumbs up. It was very effective at being able to dry the filament in the time frame that it said, and the print quality dramatically improved from that previous print that you saw versus the new one that had just printed. World of difference. The only problem that I really had is that the filament could not effectively be pulled from the uh, dryer itself into the 3D printer, and that more than likely is my fault, and I'm going to have to be able to experiment with this still further to be able to find the best location to be able to put the dryer in relationship to the 3D printer. I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can go to the Fix Dry website and take a look at the products and choose to see which one would be best for you and your needs. And again, if you live in a very humid location such as I do, Having a dryer for your filament is imperative. And I hope that you liked this video today. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribe right down there, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.